Hey everybody, it's Zach here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my Jad Fighting Guide. The goal of this guide is to teach you very simply what you need to know to get your fire cape. I don't claim to be the best Jad fighter out there, but I know how to kill him, and I believe I can teach you. There's no real requirements to kill Jad, but there are some recommended stats. Uh, to fight him, I would go for at least 80 range. Even though you could do it with a lower level, if it's your first time, it's just going to make it a lot easier to complete the caves having higher range. In fact, if you ever find yourself having trouble in the caves, a higher range level might help out a lot. I wouldn't go below 75 though, since you want to use a blowpipe in here if you have one. But we'll talk gear in a minute. I suggest 70 defense too. Not only can you wear good armor, but the higher defense you have, the easier the caves will be. So if you're already above 70 defense, then that is going to help. I'd also go for 50 plus prayer to help out a little bit with your prayer points, but... Really 43 is needed just for your protect prayers. With lower prayer level, you do get less prayer points back when you sip prayer or restore potions, so higher prayer could help if you're running out of potions. In terms of gear, you want to bring your best range gear and weapons. I assume not everybody has nearly maxed gear, but you don't need it. Similar to your stats, it's just going to make it easier and faster in the long run. You could bring black dehyde, a glory, snakeskin boots, whatever solid range gear you have. If you're having trouble in there, you might want to upgrade in some gear, but really, if you can do some range damage, you can get this done. You could use Void if you have it. Void's very powerful but low defense, so if you make mistakes, they could be very costly in Void. If you're doing this on a Slayer task, Void is out of the question since you want to wear your imbued Slayer Helm or Black Mask. Make sure it's imbued though, as it is worthless for range if it is not. As for a weapon, you definitely want to bring a Blowpipe if you have it since it will drastically decrease how long this could take. Of course, not everybody has a Blowpipe, so you could just use a Rune Crossbow and Broad Bolts for the whole thing. It would work. It's just going to be very slow at that point, and Jad could be a little tough. Although I do bring a low pipe, I like to fight Jad with my armor crossbow just for the longer range. You could go as low as a crystal bow switch for this, but killing Jad with a low pipe is still very doable. Make sure you bring some ruby or diamond bolts if you are using a crossbow on Jad. Could be regular or dragon, both work fine. For my inventory, I do bring a crossbow switch for Jad. You can use a rune crossbow if you don't have a dragon or an armor crossbow. If you're using a crystal bow, that's a solid option too, and you can kill Jad with a blowpipe. You just have less space to work with on the healers. If you have a twisted bow, bring that with dragon arrows. You're going to breeze through Jad, no problem. I take three ranging potions so I can sip a little extra just to speed up the caves. If you're finding that you run out of restores or brews, you could replace ranging potions. My first trips, I would bring about 10 brews. Now I only tend to bring 5 with me, the more comfortable you get, the less damage you're going to take in the caves. But if it's your first time, I would bring 8 to 10 brews, and then go from there. If you're using a blowpipe, you also have the spec to heal, keep that in mind. I have a stamina in the bottom of my inventory, I don't use it that often, it's in case I'm running too much, I just have it with me. And then I fill the rest with super restored. If you still have any questions on gear or inventory at this point, please let me know, I'd be happy to answer you in the comments section as soon as I can. The fight caves are located in the Tsar city, which is located in the Karamja volcano. I commonly use a glory teleport to Karamja and walk there, but there's also a mini game teleport to the fight pits, which is right next to the fight caves. As I'm about to discuss the actual fight cave fight, I think this is a good time to mention that I will be leaving a link to another video that I'm releasing with this guide, which will be an entire fight cave run that I do unedited, just so if there's anything in this video that you were hoping to get an answer for that you didn't, or just in general you want to see s some specific examples, I've got a full run there for you to watch anything you need to see. I'm going to go over the different monsters you'll fight in the cave before you get to Jad. The fight caves are linear, so you'll always know what's going to spawn, but not necessarily where in the room it will. The first monster is a bat. The bat only has 10 health, it's very weak, but whenever it attacks you, even if it hits a zero, it drains some prayer points, which is really a pain. So this is high priority to kill these quickly. They could drain your prayer points a lot, but they are easy to kill. Next we have the Muck. These use melee attacks and they only have 20 health. They also have this recoil effect. When you attack them, they'll do a little damage back, but you can't do anything about it. When you kill a Muck, it'll spawn two mini Mucks, which each have 10 health and also use a melee attack. If I'm not mistaken, these do not have a recoil effect, but it doesn't really change what you do at all, so it doesn't matter that much. I like to use these mucks as mobile safe spots from the other melee monsters, but I will show examples of that later. Next we have the rangers. These will melee you if you get too close, but they are very easy to kill. Just switch on, protect from range, and crank since they only have 40 health. They are fairly weak, and there's a couple of times during the cave you will have to tank them. You shouldn't be that worried unless you have low defense. After the rangers come these melee lizards, which are also healers, but they'll only use their heal attack if you are within melee range. 
You can protect from melee from them, but it's highly advisable to just use a safe spot instead. Save some prayer points. Though if like you're on your way to a safe spot, which we'll discuss more of those in a little bit, you might have to flick your protect from melee on or something. If it's about to punch you in the face, you might want to protect from melee. Like I mentioned earlier, you can even use the mucks to safe spot these meliers. At this point, the monsters start hitting pretty well, so try to tank as few hits as possible. On to the majors, the final type of monster before Jad. If one of these is in the room, you better have protect from magic on. They can melee you if you get too close, so stand away and range them. These can also be used to pin a healer behind them so you don't have to deal with both at the same time. It can be a little complicated making sure you don't run too close to the major, it just takes a little getting used to running around them. You really can't attack Amelia that well if it's standing behind the major and you're using like a blowpipe. So just kill the major and then go ahead and kill the Amelia at a safe spot. The next monster is Jad, but before we actually talk Jad, let's go through the pre-waves since we're still, we still gotta get to Jad, let's actually get through an example of how the waves start. They start off with just a single bat on wave 1, and then the second wave there's two bats. Anytime that you have two of one monster in the wave, the next wave is going to add a monster one tier up. So right after double bats, you have a wave with one muck. Wave 4 will be one muck and one bat. Wave 5 will be one muck, two bats. Wave 6 will be two mucks. Following that pattern, that means after two mucks, you see your first ranger. When you have two rangers, you see your first healer. When you have two healers, it'll be followed by your first major. And then when you have a double major wave on wave 62, that means the next wave is Jad himself. Now that you have an idea of the wave structure, I'm going to jump in and start going through the waves. First of all, I don't suggest having auto retaliate on the caves as it can get you killed. First few waves are basics, no overhead prayers are needed. Sometimes I do flick my offensive prayers in order to speed this up, that's not really needed. If you find yourself running low on restores before you're getting to Jad, then you want to use less offensive prayers, that's just to make the cave faster. Once you beat wave 6 with the two mucks, you want to turn on your protect from range and get ready for a ranger. You'll want to start each wave for a while with your protect from missiles overhead. Make sure you're killing the bats before they get to you so they don't drain your prayer. Wave 15 is when you see your first healer. There's no more rangers for a while, so you can stop with your protect from range. The most commonly used safe spot is on the east side of the arena, very commonly called Italy Rock, aka the boot. You can get monsters stuck in this rock very easily to safe spot any meliers. I like to get some hits in on these things while I'm luring it towards the safe spot to speed things up, but you can be safe and just run over to the safe spot if you're not feeling spunky. Again, you could also use a muck to safe spot it too. I don't suggest using a bat to safe spot since it'll drain your prayer points though. At wave 22, you're going to start to see rangers again, so you got to make sure to start your waves with protect from range on. You can kind of use rangers to safe spot, but that'll require you to keep your protect from range on even longer since you won't kill the ranger right away, so I tend to target the rangers as quick as possible and only use them as a safe spot to protect from the meliers, not necessarily to kill the meliers behind them. On the two different waves during the cave that you have two meliers to deal with, if they spawn in a way that makes it tough to safe spot, you might have to run around a little bit to either kill one of them on the move or tank a little bit of damage to find a good safe spot. Wave 31 will be your first major. It's very important to get your protect from mage on before each wave from now on. And never turn it off if there is a major in the room. They can hit very hard and can take you out very quickly. The first few waves are simple, but once you get to wave 38, you're going to have to deal with rangers without being able to protect from range. you got to find the ranger as soon as possible and take him out. You shouldn't take too much damage unless you're low defense. If you're having a hard time finding the ranger, you just got to watch where the spikes are when they hit you. Run in that direction, the cave's not too big. Wave 45 is going to have two rangers, so you got to keep your health kind of high going in and make sure you're knocking out the rangers very quickly. You'll now have healers and mages in the room. You can pin the healers behind a mage to finish off the major, or you can take the melee to the safe spot and kill it, then going back to the major. Whenever you're safe spotting and you have a major in the room, then you have to keep your protect from mage on, of course, which is going to cost more prayer points. So. Pay attention to that if you're running low on restores. At wave 53, it's going to start to feel hectic, since there will be rangers, meliers, and majors in the room. It's the same strategy as before, but you got to make sure you have your protect from mage on. Find the ranger as soon as possible, while doing your best to avoid the healer. Sometimes, if the spawn is convenient to kill the melier quick, I'll just tank the ranger, knock out the melier as quick as I can from the safe spot, then go get him. If you're low defense, you don't want to be tanking the ranger that long. You want to find him sooner than later. Wave 60 is your toughest pre-wave since you'll have one major, one melee, two rangers. But it's the same strategy. Locate the rangers and kill them as quickly as you can. 
Afterwards, you have a wave with one guy using magic and then two healers. Then, you have two majors in a wave. The next wave will be Jad. When the two majors spawn, one of them will be orange. Wherever that orange one spawns is where Jad is going to spawn in his wave. So, you want to end wave 62 standing near that spawn spot so that you can see Jad when you start the next wave. Overall, though, this is a very easy wave because you just have to protect mage. Now we have Jad. Before I do an example fight, let's brief you on the mechanics, which are pretty simple overall. He can use all three attack styles, but will only attempt to use melee if you're in his range. So don't step close. We got melee done. Each attack has a different animation, and you have a little bit of time, just a little bit, between the animation and the attack to switch on your correct prayer. You can also use the game sounds to do this, I just find that the range attack sound is a little late and you just don't get that much reaction time, making it a little more complicated. Here's a look at his range and his mage attacks. His mage attack, he just drifts back while his arms stay pointing at the ground. While his range attack, he just flails his arm up and smashes the ground, dropping a boulder on you. You don't have a ton of time to react, but plenty of time as long as you don't panic. If you're trying to pot up or hit some meliors, which I'll discuss in a sec, just always make sure you're keeping your eyes on Jad. At the very beginning of the fight, it might seem easy because you're getting all the flicks right. It'll get a little bit hectic later on, you just gotta make sure you're watching Jad. Switching the prayers is pretty easy, but it only takes one mess up to get you killed very quickly, which is demotivating. Let's just watch a few Jad attacks in a row to get the feel of protecting from him. I'll go ahead and announce each attack that I see, but anybody who isn't an audio learner, you may mute if you wish. This is range attack. Lifted his arms. Range attack again. This is mage. Mage. So they look kind of similar at first. You, I'm mostly watching the arms. Mage. Arms are pointing towards the ground. It's got to be a mage attack. Arms went up. It's a range attack. Overall, you'll end up getting used to it when you practice a little. Alright, so now you're in the Jad fight and you get him down to half health. He's going to spawn some healers. These are just mini meliers that you saw from the last few waves. With decent defense, you can just attack each healer so that they attack you instead of healing him and tank their damage. They have the same mechanics as the big healers, so once they're aggressive, they can only use their healing attack if they're within range of hitting you. And they can only heal Jad if he's close enough to the healer. So you just gotta attack each one of them. You can let them attack you, or you can line them up so only one can attack you if you don't want to take that much damage. And then you can just attack Jad from far away. I sometimes use the blowpipe just to, to hit each healer because it's faster, but overall this is the reason I'm using the crossbows so that I can stand back a little further when I have these healers on me. You could also attack the healers, then run through Jad between attacks to pin him to the other side if you're feeling really spunky, or take the time to kill the healers, which usually a blowpipe would do well on that. Keep in mind, Jad will be attacking you this whole time, unless you drag him behind the Italy Rock safe spot, but overall, you gotta keep your eye on him. I don't really recommend trying to safe spot with him, as opposed to practicing your prayers. Just get used to flicking your prayers back and forth, it'll make the kill a lot faster and easier overall. Even though messing up sucks, you just gotta practice it, It's all it takes. You can attack one to two healers between each Jad attack. Overall, this is some of the best practice you can get flicking your prayers, is trying to either pot back up or attacking other healers while you're doing it. Many times in this process, that's what's going to get you killed, and it's very frustrating, but again, it's just all about practice. If you're a wealthy man with a Tebow, you can just out-hit the healers. If you don't want to deal with them, it might be slightly slower, but you can out-hit them. After you get the healers, set up and focus on Jad again. Once he's down to zero health, you're done. You've gotten your fire cape. There are some players that nail Jad on their first attempt. There's some players that take 10 plus tries. Mine took me... Somewhere between the 8 and 10 amount for my very first fire cape, so don't get demotivated from a death, it's hard not to, easier said than done of course, but you're likely to struggle at first, aka getting one hit before you see him, maybe because you blew it on the spawn, little things are going to go wrong with like the healers, you just aren't good at your prayers yet, anything that goes wrong, many players have been through it and it's really just practice makes perfect. Like I stated earlier in the vid, also if you're having trouble getting your stats up or getting better gear can always help. But overall, if you still have questions on what to do, be sure to leave those in the comments section below. Like I mentioned earlier in the vid, I do have a link in the description to a video of an entire unedited run 
of the fight caves just for any tips and tricks that you're looking for in there if you want to check out a specific part of the run or even watch the full thing to get some ideas on it you can go ahead and check that out other than the fire cape loot you also get a full 16k tokel and a chance at the jad pet when you kill jad uh, if you kill Jad off task, it's a 1 in 200. If you kill him on task, it's a 1 in 100 that you got the pet. But you could also exchange a fire cape. Let's say you already have yours and you're killing him again on task or something. You could exchange that fire cape for a 1 in 200 chance at the Jad pet. Overall, I believe this is everything I wanted to tell you about fighting Jad. It can be a little daunting if you've never done it before, but overall, it's not that complicated of a process. And it's a great way to practice some PVM. Again, if you still have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. If you also have any tips of your own on Jad, be sure to leave those below too. The idea of this guide was just to teach you how to get your fire cape, not necessarily do the fastest and best Jad you can every single time. So I'm sure we could stack up a lot of other tips in the comments section. Thank you very much for stopping by, everybody. I do hope that this guide helped, and best of luck with your fire cape grind.